In the 1990s, all the resources in the Columbia were, were going down. And I remember that there were some years where the sockeye run was under 5,000 fish at wells. It was, it was really looking pretty sad. With the last couple of years, under the uh, influence of the fish water management tool, we've seen that there's been a tremendous improvement in the production of sockeye in the Okanagan. This year has been a phenomenal year. Ocean conditions were, were good for us. There's no doubt about that. And that helps a lot. And we see that there are years where all the resources respond equally. The Chinook are coming back strong. It's an okay year for steelhead. But the sockeye are coming back huge. But they're not coming back huge to Red, Redfish Lake or to the Wenatchee. They're coming back huge to the Okanagan. So people should be paying attention that there's something going on in the Okanagan that is unique to the Okanagan that we don't see in these other systems. And it's the fish water management tool. In 1990, Douglas PUD signed a long-term fish settlement agreement with the fish management agencies and tribes. Part of this agreement required us to produce juvenile Okanagan River sockeye. Sockeye salmon have a unique life cycle. During the fall, the sockeye spawn in a river near a nursery lake. In the spring, after the eggs hatch, the sockeye will emerge as fry and migrate to the lake where they'll spend a year or more before migrating to the Pacific Ocean and on to the Gulf of Alaska generally spending two years in the salt water before returning to their spawning grounds. Columbia River sockeye primarily occupy three lake systems, a very small and endangered redfish lake population off the Snake River in Idaho, Lake Wenatchee at the head of the Wenatchee River, and Osoyoos Lake on the Okanagan River in Canada. An estimated 90% of the Columbia River sockeye return to the Okanagan Basin in British Columbia and are known as the Okanagan sockeye. The 1990 Fish Settlement Agreement required Douglas PD to develop a hatchery program for the enhancement of Okanagan sockeye. After years of testing the ultimately unsuccessful hatchery concept for sockeye, Douglas PD switched from trying to enhance the population to trying to prevent the extinction of the population. The PD conducted many studies and surveys to determine the factors behind the decline of the Okanagan sockeye population. Shane Bickford was involved in many of the early studies. During the data collection phase of one of the refinement studies, we stumbled upon an important clue as to the limiting factors for Okanagan River sockeye. On the last day of the five weeks of surveys that we conducted up here, we took our raft up to McIntyre Dam and we were trying to launch the raft. We got up there and the river was, was almost dry. And so we, we carried on through the day and conducted our surveys to collect that last bit of data for the study. But in doing so, what we discovered was that the eggs were dry. The eggs were dry even though they were in the gravel, primarily because there wasn't enough water in the river. So it was, a, it was an aha moment where we had put the pieces of the puzzle together, where we had been able to identify what we at the time felt to be the, the most important limiting factor on the Okanagan River sockeye population, which was the human-induced manipulations of the, the river flows. Our research in the mid to late 1990s confirmed that the water management of the Okanagan Basin in Canada was a primary factor in the decline of the Okanagan sockeye population. Besides low water and desiccation of the reds, at times the water was too high and washed out the eggs. The Okanagan River is part of a complex water system involving numerous water management needs and requests. The Okanagan River originates at the south end of Okanagan Lake. The river then passes through Skaha Lake and onto the smaller Vaso Lake before reaching Osoyoos Lake. The river between Vaso and Osoyoos Lakes is critical spawning habitat for the sockeye. This Okanagan Basin water system was engineered in the 1950s, primarily to control flooding. Other water management requirements include agriculture, municipal water systems, navigation, recreation, and environmental concerns, including a variety of fish species. In order to meet these sometimes competing needs, much of the Okanagan River was channelized, grade control structures were added, and each of the lakes has an irrigation dam that holds or releases the water to control the flow of the river. After seeing firsthand the impact that flows could have on the population, Douglas PUD refocused its efforts on working with the Canadian parties to investigate strategies to address the habitat and water management issues. 
Rick Klinge was a PUD's representative. Uh, the province has management of the water uh, releases. Uh, lake Okanagan, which is a very large lake, is managed annually to assure that there'll be uh, no flooding in the lower part and that they can uh, maintain uh, adequate water levels in the summer for the needs of the citizen for recreation and irrigation and things like that. And because the climate's very similar to what we have in central Washington, it's tricky to manage because they get a lot of snowfall and uh, rain in the winter and then for months it's dry and actually the lake will have negative input uh, that they lose more water from just evaporation rather than from what's coming into the lake. So in the past, the management of that lake has been done in a way that they see a big storm coming, they release a lot of water. Unfortunately, what's happened, uh, the sockeye eggs that are downstream of the dams that are controlling the level of the lake are scoured out. So much water comes down that it's done in a way that the eggs are basically blasted out of the gravel and those eggs are, uh, they're lost. Um, they just don't survive. Uh, in doing this also, the province was dropping the level of the lake without realizing it and actually drying up or desiccating the kokanee reds. Uh, this is a cousin to the sockeye. It's a landlocked sockeye, basically. And these fish were something that the citizens in the Penticton and Kelowna area were very eager to have back on their sport fishery. And so when the Canadians came together with this management plan, they said, we want you to help us develop a computer model that will uh, maintain protection for sockeye, that sounded great for us, maintain protection for kokanee, which we needed to hear more about. We were going to, it was going to be okay if it was part of the whole package and it wasn't gonna cost us too much. And um, uh, in doing so, they could give us the assurance that we would see an improvement on, on fish production. That was the genesis of the fish water management tool. The fish water management tool was designed to address the Okanagan Basin's water needs while protecting Okanagan sockeye and Okanagan Lake kokanee. The fish water management tool is a web-based, data-intensive, collaborative computer model that uses real-time snowpack measurements along with historical statistics to forecast the lake's annual inflows. In-lake and in-river monitoring stations provide real-time water and flow levels along with temperature and other information vital to the fish's survival. The tool is dependent on a variety of biological surveys to help inform water managers. Surveys include shore spawning kokanee enumeration in Okanagan Lake, in-river sockeye enumeration in the Okanagan River, biosampling of spawning sockeye, fry emergence timing, and a variety of hydroacoustic surveys and other monitoring in the Soyuz Lake. The data collected is programmed into the tool and helps water managers and others decide when to hold or release water through the river system to benefit the fish at all the freshwater stages of their life cycle. The fish water management tool was tested in 2002 through 2004 with tremendous success. Following testing, the fish water management tool went live in the fall of 2004 and has been upgraded and enhanced each year as we learn more about the sockeye and their ecosystem. One use for the tool came unexpectedly. A Soyuz Lake has three basins. For much of the year, the south and central basins will not support sockeye because of too little oxygen or too warm water, known as a temperature oxygen squeeze. In some years, the squeeze can occur in the north basin, severely limiting the habitable area in the lake for a short period of time in the late summer. With the help of the fish water management tool, water managers are asked to release a pulse of water down the river to see if this pulse would oxygenate the water long enough to get the juvenile and adult fish through the squeeze period. By monitoring the oxygen levels in the lake, we confirmed that the pulse did in fact break up the squeeze and help to make the North Basin habitable. This pulse release has been a tremendous add-on to the tool. The Canadian entities that operate the fish water management tool have won various awards in Canada for environmental stewardship resource protection, and salmon enhancement. Dr. Kim Hyatt heads the Salmon and Regional Ecosystems Program for the Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada and was the team leader and chief architect for the fish water management tool. I've seen fish in a lot of places. I've worked from the Alaska Panhandle to the Queen Charlottes to the Nass and Skeena Rivers, the west coast of Vancouver Island, and finally here in the southern interior of British Columbia. And uh, there isn't 
a there isn't a better experience that I've had either working with people or solving problems uh, fisheries problems uh, than I've had in this particular project I mean it's it's just uh, a supremely satisfying uh, set of accomplishments and outcomes this is a uh, a phenomenal success story uh, by anyone's measure really. There are very few examples where populations have been taken down to uh, that few fish and within as little as two decades uh, brought back from the brink to the point where uh, this year and last year uh, for the first time in Asuyas Lake ever there was a recreational sockeye fishery. There also is the restoration of uh, food and societal and cultural fisheries by the Okanagan Nation Alliance. Uh, their people are uh, feeling the reconnection to something that is of supreme cultural importance to them. This salmon that is coming up this water was told to do so for hundreds and thousands of years. Within these communities, I know down in Brewster, you know, the recreational opportunities have been uh, fantastic. And there was a huge amount of excitement in the community from uh, all parts. Brian Simons was a co-architect of the Fishwater Management Tool. This tool has really enlightened everybody as to what's in play, what the significant pressure points are for these competing objectives on management. But in particular, we have a much better understanding of the fish, their needs, how we can manage for those without compromising the other interests. So it's been a great success, a great partnership, and we have to look at all the players, whether it was Rick Klinge from Douglas County PUD, whether it was the Colville Tribes, whether it was the Okanagan Nation Alliance representatives on their fisheries uh, board, whether it was Department of Fisheries and Oceans, the F Provincial Fisheries people, or my own water management program, water stewardship staff, have done a great job of collaborating, putting aside our our individual interests and authorities and just saying how can we do a better job collectively and we've done that without compromising any other interests. It's a great success. It has helped to minimize all of the impacts that have occurred from uh, uh, flood regulation and water releases to these natural conditions that have set up and we're limiting the productivity of, of the Okanagan. But now this tool is in place and it can be used to help to reduce those natural limitations. I don't think that people can deny the fact that uh, the fish water management tool has been the reason why we see these fish coming back to the Okanagan in the numbers that we do.